Okay, we are recording. All right. So here, this also has the information uh, in this discussion board for the introductory perspective assignment. Um, poster drawings here. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, 50 points uh, for the two together and uh, at midnight, like by end of the day on the 26th. All right. So you choose this to create a, I want you each to create a unique thread for your work in this um, forum. So you do that, create thread. Your name is, is good. And to post an image, this plus sign or Phillips head for a Phillips head screw is what that looks like. But that there, that's how you add an image. Insert local files, and then you can choose. I have like something saved to my desktop. Like here's a um, drawing I did recently. And the higher, the more, the um, the bigger the file size. I was 3.7 megabytes. That's a little bit bigger than I needed. Um, it takes longer for it to upload to um, to this um, discussion board. I'm gonna wait for a little bit. Um, you know, my phone is set to take relatively large file size pictures um, so it can take a little bit of time and I didn't mean for it to take so much time for this demo image. Um, once this is done I'm going to show you how to for those of you who need to see it how to reduce the, the size of the image. So you have a big big picture um, yeah there, I'm just going to say. Stop, please. I don't really want to stop it. No. It's stuck in this loop here. I think. Drop that. And open up the drawing. There it is. There. So this is just a pencil on paper. Um, in the tools menu, adjust size. And I can see down here it tells me this is 3.7 megabytes. If I just change like the width of the height, so if I just say I want half of that, or I'll just say that 20 brings it down to one megabyte, which is a much more manageable um, size. You see it'll look a little bit smaller there. And then save it. And now I have a smaller, more manageable file size to upload, because you see this guy is still going. Um, and I have kind of goofed that up. I think what I'm going to do is just close this browser window. Yeah. And free us from this. Uh, and then I'm going to open up Blackboard again. Let's go to that. See what my Blackboard looks like. All right. Let's try this again. Create thread. Let's 
files. Hello module. And it tells me it's down to one megabyte right there. That way this won't struggle so hard to upload. And uh, yes, Blackboard, I need you to do it this time. Just be patient. Um, and I think in the meantime, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to come back and bring back my overhead. Okay. Hmm. Oh, there. Sure, I'm going to bring this back. There, it's done uploading. And you can see just one uh, one megabyte is still pretty large for the screen so for like the size of this um, um, sort of like a template for this. Then I will so there I had to remember to submit it, and there is mine. Um, all of yours will appear. They tend to like be like ascending order. The next one will be stacked on top of mine, so the most the most recent one is going to be on the top, um, and so that's just how you'll do it. So if I need to see your work and I click onto this and see, there it is. So I probably could have used a file size half that, um, you know, even like smaller, less less than a megabyte, because uh, it'll come across uh, very clearly. But this is actually this is not bad because you know I want to be able to see clearly what you're what you're sending me. Okay. Now this has elements of perspective in terms of just um, depth, seeing things you know receding, overlapping, and this horizon with the mysterious smoke um, coming up off that horizon. I don't know what's happening over there. Uh, something that seems to be a bit menacing. All right. All right. So I'll go back, surf all the back and forth here, but um, I had to stop sharing it so I can switch to the overhead camera. Okay. Any questions about that for um, putting something, like posting something in Blackboard? All right. If, if you're trying to, if you find like you're trying to do it and like for some reason, like I'm doing everything right, but it's not posting it, send it to me by email and just say, sorry, I tried it in Blackboard. It was just like, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do it right. I don't know why. Here it is. That's better than not, you know, that's better than missing a deadline. Okay. Now, um, This alteration here, Oops. All right. Um, I'm doing some simple shading on these 
just so we can see like a, a little, you see a little bit of volume. Let's say like, um, you know, like if I had light coming here, I'll say here is my, oh, it's, you can't see that. Um, there's a um, very happy sun up here. Sun's always happy. I don't know what's going on, but uh, light's coming down this way. Right, light's coming down this way. So like this surface here is facing it. That would be the brightest. You can just use the side of the pencil. Only this surface in the front, or like that's facing me here, would be darker. There's just some like basic light logic. But that's, um, you know, that's something that right now um, I think can remain relatively basic because I would I really want you to make sure that I really want to make sure that you get a, a decent introduction to perspective like how to use perspective drawing um, from this first assignment and if you're already familiar with perspective then just enjoy that something that uh, you know might not be um, you know, super challenging. Um, and if it is, if it is challenging for you, then ask me questions and, you know, uh, try it. There are a lot of, um, you know, the internet is full of all kinds of tutorials or just like way, like really more, they're more demonstrations of how to, like that's like somebody else demonstrating it. But, um, you know, it's not really a tutorial because the person is just showing you, like, you know, how it's applied, but the person is not necessarily breaking it down or helping. It's definitely not helping you with your drawing. So uh, you can watch, you know, YouTube videos on, on perspective, and they can be helpful, um, but I think that sometimes they are of um, limited use because if you have a question... The YouTube video cannot, like this, like, you know, the video can't answer your question. Okay. Um, how about these above eye level? Now, I could just say, like, I'm going to make a curved alteration here. Now, if I make, so here, let me um, point out. So if I make the alteration here on this, I see new edges going down to the vanishing point here. If I put the alteration out here, then I only see it go there. And I don't really see a new surface because it's hidden because it's on the left side of this form. This would work. I really like the idea of you showing me, like making an alteration that shows the new surface that you create when you take part of the um, form away. There, now when I, just in terms of technique, if I'm using the straight edge uh, to draw straight, like, to draw a line that's straight, my habit is to put my pencil on the vanishing point and then rotate the straight edge off the pencil. So if you try to like line it up with this and then you go to put this down, I think that can take longer and can be uh, less efficient. There. Now this curve appears on this closer, this closer, uh, like the, the front, and also reappears on the back. And I just need to try to draw this curve as close to parallel as I can get it.
All right, then I'm going to clean up some of these soft edges and make those corners a little more decisive. Good. This being a curving surface, there would be light changing on the surface. I'll just do both of these. Now I'm going to do that. It looks going to look like underwear or something if I do both of those. It's not what I mean. That's enough. Okay. So like um, shading with pencil, see, if you use wood clenched pencils and they get dull, you just need to keep them sharp. Uh, this is a very soft pencil that I'm using. Um, if you got any drawing pencils, if you have, like, if you do that or have done that, and you've got like a 2B pencil or a 4B or a 6B pencil, those are great for making like a. They're they're darker, but you lose the point uh, pretty fast. So like this pencil here, this is like a Murado Black Warrior. It's actually just a number two pencil. It tends to hold the point longer. Uh, it's not as dark. As this one, which is a called a black wing, um, but you know, honestly, if you, as long as you have a pencil that works and you can get and you can draw with it, it's fine. I would avoid um, like a two H or four H graphite pencil because the graphite is so hard and like it's just. It just doesn't show up as well as like the B pencils or even like an HB there. So my light source is over here. Oh, and I have to clean this up. There. So you can see this. Now, even like this is this surface right here, it's not right directly above the vanishing point, but it's still it's getting you know foreshortened so that it's a very it's like a thin oblique angle that I see that at. And so it makes this surface seem really thin. You know, if you were to look at it straight on, you would see, you know, you would see just like a flat rectangle, but not with this view. All right, I'm going to sharpen this up here. Uh, there. And this is like, that's just still not really, there we go. It's really hard. It can be really kind of like tough to get like really good, like accurate horizontals. Whoops when you're not like uh, when you're not using a drafting table. So you want to watch out for that. Hey, Joe, come here. You want to say hi? No, I can't pick you up. You won't let me. All right. All right. So um, how does this look to you so far? Kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah, so as I'm understanding, we don't have to make the triangle look like a real building or anything. It just has right. to. No, right now, you don't have to try to make it look like anything uh, realistic. Um, you know, if you can, sure, go ahead. If you, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, try to stand in the way of you doing something that's like, you know, more fun or more interesting if you can do it. 
Um, I just don't I really, you know, something in a class like this, um, you know, you will see um, there will be people, some, you know, some students will have more experience in this kind of drawing or just drawing in general, and some will have less experience. I really don't want the students with less experience to think that they're supposed to be able to draw as well as someone with years of experience, like when we start the class, because that is not how I feel. Um, I know when I was in classes and there were, I was in classes with people that were, you know, either like more experienced or just, you know, better than I, um, I didn't like it and I wanted to be as good as those people. Uh, and I had to learn to just be patient because, you know, you, you can't, um, there's really no, there's no substitute for what experience gives you. Okay, and the drawings that you want to see, is it okay if we have eraser marks like that, or do you want it to be pristine? No, they don't have, they can be sketchy. Okay. They can be sketchy. Um, and you want us to leave all the lines to uh, the vanishing point? I would say you can leave um, some of them. You don't have to leave all of them necessarily. Um, Second, because um, perfection is not Joe. Sorry. Playing under the door, and probably someone will probably claw somebody under the door, and you'll hear it. Um. Uh. Yeah. I don't. I, so, like these guidelines which are um, in perspective, they're referred to as orthogonals, which is like in geometry, that's like a diagonal. Um, and in perspective, they are these like diagonals, but they're the, and these like imaginary lines that recede to the, to the vanishing point. Um, you know, those can be, I don't mind seeing those because then I, I can it's kind of like you showing your work that I can, I, you're showing me that, you know that that line is there. So, yeah, so I would say, like, if they look kind of like this or like this, that's great. Uh, you know, and I'm throwing in the shading kind of for fun. Um, I'll take this off. So, like, so I could take this corner off to try to make this look a little bit more like, you know, it's got this opposing curve on the back side. This is just me screwing around. So I'm turning this, and you really, you can't see any of the other, like, you know, new surfaces I create with that, but that's okay. I got that right there. Now, um, you see this, like, you know, the one-point perspective, you've got the horizon line and the vanishing point in the center. And with this drawing, the vanishing point and the road assumes that you are standing in the middle looking straight at the, like you're looking at the, you're looking in the same direction that these edges are receding. And that's why there's one point in the middle. That's one point perspective. It presumes that, like, if you'd say, like, um, if you were to draw that in plan view, here's the road, and in plan view, you're just, like, those are going to be drawn purely parallel, and then, um, whoops, and then here's you, aerial view of you standing in the middle of the road, looking straight ahead. And then that building over here is like over here. Like that. Does that make sense? That like one point perspective is a certain orientation to the objects. 
Uh, you know, if there were an object over here that's also in one point perspective, the edge would be parallel to the road, would be parallel to this, you know, over here. That's all like one point perspective. Um, the reason I'm, I, I bring this up is because two point perspective is a different orientation to the things that you're looking at. Like two point perspective, instead of being like having these, like, you know, like this front edge that just stays at the same depth, you'd have it turned at an angle. And so the vanishing point is not straight away from you anymore. They're going to be on the right and the left of the, on the vanishing point. And I will show you that. Yeah. Okay, two point perspective, separate drawing, horizon line. Mark that. Vanishing point and Yes, there would be a vanishing point here. Now, the thing that you want to be, I want you to be very cautious of is the vanishing point. So here's left vanishing point, right vanishing point. Um, it, with the vanishing points, this, like they're relative, in this drawing, I'm trying to keep it on my screen, they're relatively close together. So I want to make sure that the scale is is reduced. Let me get this. Oh, that's better. Yeah, I want to just go to flip them. A different sheet here. I'm going to make sure that you can see this. See this well. Um, Could we maybe turn the paper horizontally for the two well, points? I, yes, actually, you you should. Um, for my my, um, yeah, you should turn your paper horizontally. In my um, anytime I try to turn my iPad horizontally, it just kind of keeps turning the. It makes the, it would make this come up sideways, like the the view would change to sideways, and so I'm kind of stuck with this narrow narrower view on my camera. Um, but you can, yes, you should turn your paper to be horizontal. And I'll just do this so that those can be. Over there. Okay. So the orientation to like, um, Here, let's have, let's have you come back. Uh, this is the plan view of you looking straight ahead. And instead of an object being oriented like this in plan view, the two point perspective, it's turned at an angle like that. So like in one point perspective, you have like the sort of like front surface facing you. In this case, the, the corner here is the closest thing to you. And you have these parallels receding this way and that way. So there's going to be a vanishing point out to your right and then a vanishing point out to your left for these parallel edges that are receding. So it's a little more complicated. So with one point, you start with a rectangle. In two point, you start with a line. So it's a single vertical line. From the top and the bottom of the line, you go to the right vanishing point and to the left vanishing point. So 
I'm going to just decide that the depth is stops there on the left side and we'll put the depth here on the right side. And then to check my edges, yep, see too much of an angle. That's better. That's good. And here, there. In there. So I've got the left side and right side of this box. From these corners on the back end, I go to, like from the right side, I go to the left vanishing point because that's the direction it recedes. From the left side, I go to the right vanishing point. And where they intersect, where these cross, that's the back corner right there. Okay. So um, now I missed it because I was drawing it. I'm sorry. Oh, well, that was your one chance. <laughs> Darn it. Just the top. I missed the top. Okay. But here, the um, so the one point I start with like a flat rectangle. You can't do that in two point perspective. With one point, you're only there. The edges, these parallels that are receding, are going only in one direction away from you. And then, like, it's like a flat side. It's like, you know, you only see one set receding directly away from you. In two point, the object is turned. So here's yeah, that, this. That I got. I just missed you drawing the top of the building part of the. I'll do it again. Okay, so from this from this corner back here, I draw the left vanishing point. And then from this corner here to the right vanishing point. Okay. And then where they cross, that's the back corner. Okay. And you know, this can be um, kind of you know important because this can be a hard, you know, this can be difficult to get this angle like how flat this angle is, like unless like you use a straight edge to to draft it. So, um, and if I want to have another object like here, you know, I can draw this here. Um, I can put this vertical right there so I can show us a, a space between them. And then this one like that. Here I could draw a little bitty baby one. So, Actually, I think what I'm going to do. Oh. Have this one stop there. It comes close, but this vertical is going to uh, make it overlap just a little bit. Okay. Right. 
Nope, that'll do it for that one. Now here I can have one here. I'm going to make this above and below. That is pretty cool. All right. That. There. That. Well, that's actually kind of good. Right there. You can check your angles by placing your um, pencil on the vanishing point and then just like rotating the um, straight edge. Check that, check that, check that, and then come up and check that. Very good. So um, this can actually be kind of a composition that sweeps up this way. Um, if I'm going to have something Loading box. It's not that you would never, you know, there can be architectural structure, often there is architectural structure seen above your eye level. So drawing above the, above the horizon line like this is um, also a good thing to get accustomed to. You know, we don't look up nearly as often as we look down at the things on the floor. So sometimes, you know, like making sense out of um, the things that you see above the horizon line in a perspective drawing uh, can, you know, be a little bit challenging. I'm going to draw through this so I can identify, locate that corner since I have this one sitting like behind that where it could be on even on sitting on top of it. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, I'm really new to like drawing. I haven't done any of this perspective drawing. Yeah. And you know, you were talking about how you can kind of check what I see is like the horizontal lines from your vanishing points, right? Yep. Are all the vertical lines exactly like straight down? Like how are you making sure that the vertical lines are accurate? Excellent question. So uh, one thing that I'm doing, if I were you, like if I were doing this on a drafting table, I could tape the paper down and use the main line bar and a triangle and make sure I'm getting these like, you know, verticals that are perpendicular to the horizon line. Yeah. Right here, I'm using the edge of the sheet of paper. So when I put this okay. down here, I compare it to the vertical of the edge of the sheet of paper and I'm just trying to make sure it's close. Okay. And that's, okay, that's yeah. I mean, you could say like, I'm going to measure, you know, like over it's, you know, two and an eighth, two and an eighth, but that's, you know, I mean, that's, that would work just fine. It's just, it could be a little bit, you know, slow and clumsy to measure like, you know, you need to measure. What's that? For now, you can kind of just like eyeball it to make sure yes. they're pretty. Yes. Great. Okay. What it, so and really, I will check them if I look at the look at it and see like that looks weird, uh, like it's leaning over or something like that. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah. So that's. 
It's a good point, uh, Lauren, that you know you can be do this like I could draw these with a straight edge, but if they're not drawn correctly, they would they would be you know like very clearly drawn incorrectly. Like if I've got my straight edge angled like that, and I go to draw that vertical. you would see that something doesn't look quite right. Um, and you know, once I have, if I've got some other like lower ones, like verticals drawn correctly, and I put this here, I can like check it against like what, like this one or this one and see if it looks approximately parallel. Uh, okay. One, two, three, four, five. I want one more. Put it up here. There. So some of these, like as they get higher up or closer to the vanishing points, you can start to get what looks like distortion. So like normally, like in it, like looking looking at space in front of you, you can concentrate on like about like what's right in here. I'm drawing stuff way out into the peripheral vision, um, and. In a perspective drawing, you can draw it and make it accurate, but it kind of goes beyond what you would normally be able to see. Let's see if that's not straight. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll be back in a couple minutes um, to do some alterations, but you keep um, keep working.
Okay. All right. Um, I think um, this one here, I'm going to make a, um, I think I'll do it like on this one, start easiest. I'll make a rectangular alteration on the, just on the corner. If I go like a vertical, I enlarge this. do it right there yet. I'm going to do it here so it's uh, see it more clearly. Vertical and then use the vanishing point. If I try to take like a rectangular notch out of that, the vertical will be straight up and down vertical and then the horizontal will be going to the vanishing point. You wouldn't draw it just like straight, like your horizontals in this case are not parallel to the horizon line. These horizontals are going to the vanishing point. So they seem to be, you know, diagonals, not just straight horizontal, normally like flat horizontal lines. So there, there, I take that notch out. Then what I do is I create two new points here and here. And from those two points, there's this on this surface going to the left vanishing point. And then there's going to be a new edge on the, the right surface. And then, you know, what I see down here is governed by this down here. So from this corner, this new corner on the bottom, I draw to the vanishing point to get the bottom edge. Determining where the vertical falls can be done in a couple of different ways. Like, I mean, I could guess, like, oh, I wonder where it is. I've got, like, the original corner down here, so I could just draw to the vanishing point and where these two cross each other, that's where my vertical is going to be. So you can almost see like the negative space that I took out. So like knowing, like keeping this, like knowing where that original corner was, this goes to the vanishing point. Then you see over here, the same thing goes to the vanishing point. And then the verticals kind of create that rectangle. There's that rectangular cavity and then I would erase this stuff There, then I got me this overhang right here. Hmm. Up above here, I'm going to make a little slot of space. So this is going to come out where it comes down here and hits this edge. It kind of wraps around the bottom. Oops. Yeah. Oh, that again, that was messy.
there. And then here where this meets the back, both like both of these where they meet those this opposite edge on the bottom, there will be a vertical. If this saw this surface here is solid, you can't see this vertical, but you can see this one. And then there's going to be like this corner right here. I also see a new, like an edge there for the interior corner up there. And that kind of works. Doesn't look quite straight. That's good. All right. Cool. Now, you know, there are some alterations, like if you wanted to put a circular, like, I guess here, you know, I don't know if you would want to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Maybe I will. Here, we'll put like a rectangular opening. Right in the middle here. Okay, so there would be, if I just say, like, I'm going to create this sort of like, you know, square hole here. That's like, you know, you're drawing like a negative of a rectangular form. There would be edges going like from here, from here, from here, through the interior. The only one you see is this one. Okay. Now, if I want to know, do I see all the way through? There's a way, actually, I'm going to make this a little bit um, wider here so that we can see all the way through it. Those things like that. Because if I draw this, the depth of this looks like it's deeper than the outside over here to me um, and but we're gonna I'm gonna check it and the way I can do that is from this top edge if I go over to the front this corner down in perspective and then back in perspective to here if this edge here overlaps this one within this rectangle then I would be able to see like a little gap of space out to out the back if it crosses like here on a solid surface, it wouldn't work, but I'm, it looks like it's going to um, work just fine. And if, if, if this alteration, like you try drawing it and you're like, I, you know, you can't get it right, draw something that is not as, uh, you know, not as complicated. Okay, so this comes back and they intersect right there, which tells me I've got a vertical. You can see a little bit of space out the back of it there. So this something that's very can be very helpful in figuring out 
you know, like how to draw all like, you know, like all, all of the legs of a piece of furniture, um, you know, just to understand the, the true depth of something. If I start with this opening on the front and I go up, like, so like wrap it around, like wrap that edge around in perspective, I go up to the corner, down the, le the left side in perspective. And when I meet the back corner, I come back and it kind of shows me like, you can kind of see this plane as if it goes all the way through. And then I can see that there's a gap like this. I can, this is like through to the sky on the other side. So how does that look to you? Like a building with a hole in it. Yes, it does. Does it seem like, do these alterations I'm drawing, um, I mean, do they, do they kind of make sense? Yes. <laughs> like, Just take a little practice. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> well, what if you took a slit out of the side of that building as well? This one? Yeah, like underneath it, like the one on top. Good. So if I say like there's going to be a little like another slot of space. So I'm starting with a vertical, like a vertical edge. And I draw to like here. And I'm going to draw like a down. Sharper pencil. I think I'm just going to like make it go to there. Like if I draw, like I'm trying to figure out, say like about here, I'll draw this line longer than I need it. And then when I draw my, this bottom edge to the vanishing point, or they overlap tells me that that's how you know how far down that goes. This comes out of there. This goes to the vanishing point there. This goes to the vanishing point on the right, and where they intersect, that's where the corner is. Okay. So, um, it's going to take practice. I just take yes. Well, that is, if this is new, then you know, do simple things. Here's, um, you know, like a simple thing you you know you could do like a. Oh, well, I want to do a larger one um, for demonstration. Um, you know, if you say, like, I want to do a curve there, that could just be one alteration, even like without the notch out of the bottom. And you're going to take this, this corner off. Where this curve along this edge where the curve starts and where the curve ends or the two places where the curve like sort of like you know leaves the horizontal and then turns and when it becomes vertical again what you would do is from those two points draw to the opposite edge on the back side the back of it Uh, let me make that a little bit darker. I mean, normally I would make this light because I know I'm going to erase these lines. Stop moving. Ugh. So like there, it reaches it back here.
So here and here is where those would correspond on the, on the opposite edge. And then I'm just like, here's where it's just like freehand drawing where you just try to make a curve and look like you want to make the curves look like they're about the same. Uh, they wouldn't be exactly the same because with the depth, the change in depth, the appearance of the curve would be a little bit different. But, you know, you make it really, I think it's just advantageous in here to just try to make it as close as you can because um, it looks right. And that is a very important, um, that's something very important in any kind of drawing, um, really any kind of representation of something, you want to make it look right. Sometimes you have to uh, fudge the perspective in exchange for making something look right because the perspective sometimes can be accurate, but it can look it can look strange. Like if you know you get into like peripheral vision, too far into the peripheral vision, something can look really like weird and impossible. There. So do both viewpoints have to be? on the opposite edges of the paper. These vanishing points? Sorry, vanishing points, yes. Yes, yes, they do. Like for these, ob so what? these objects are right angles that I'm drawing. Right. And so the view of them, like if we just do a little inset here, here's you. Um, let me uh, put this over. Okay, so um, that in case it confuses things. So here's you. That's your head, that's your shoulders. This is you looking straight ahead. Right? Um, you're drawing an object, like a rectangular object sitting in front of you. This is a right angle, 90 degrees. And these edges recede. And they're, you know, these parallels or edges are receding and they recede at a right angle. The vanishing point is also like, from like, like from your eyes, is like out at a right angle. So you have to draw the vanishing points far enough far enough apart because you you know if they're too close together then like like the the angle from you the viewer might not might might not actually turn out to be 90 degrees if you put the vanishing points too close together. Right. Sense. So I guess my question was, oh, I don't know. It's hard to see. Me, um, oh, it makes it blurry. Here, but here, let me I see. didn't know if it. I didn't know if it had to be. It makes it. You can't see it because for some reason oh, it's blurring. Is filter is. Uh... Yeah, I. I'll next time I'll not turn that on. Um, I didn't know if it had to be all the way like across the complete paper, or can you put one? All the way to the edge of the paper on one side, and then another vanishing point almost to the other edge, or all the way to the complete edge of the other side of the paper. Well, you know, in um, in truth, you could have like a vanishing point that's like like closer to your middle of your view, but then the right, the other one would have to be way off the page because it's kind okay. of it's a ninety degree angle from you. And if you move one, you've got to move the other one. And if they're too close, it'll squ like kind of like pinch all the angles. Okay. So um, you'll see when we do um, plan projection perspective that um, you'll see how you arrive at right angles from like, you know, uh, in the perspective drawing used, you know, and it'll be like, like the vanishing points are drawn at a right angle. Uh, from the viewer, um, and you'll see also like like if you 
like you can you can adjust them so that one of like they're not the same distance they're not right like um like one of them can be closer to the center of your view and the other one can be farther away okay so um it kind of depends on like the angle um the, like your angle looking across the space because we would start it based on the architecture, not just individual objects. Uh, and then presumably, of course, in, in, you know, in interior, often objects sit parallel to each other because it's a better way to organize the space. If you have all the furniture turned diagonal, like angles away from the, from the, um, from the walls, it's not, you know, often not making the best use of the space. Right. So, um, that's, you know, like, you know, like things sitting parallel and, you know, sitting at right angles to each other is, is very common. Um, you know, like in the eighties people tried, you know, jaunty angles and things, you know, kind of set askew and it was interesting for a little while, but then it's like, it's like the corner of the table is in my way. Like, why is this like sitting jacked out into the middle of the room like that? Um, so people tried it and like, well, that was, that was fun, but it actually doesn't work as well. So. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Makes sense. Mm-hmm.